Warning, hydrogen peroxide is corrosive. Disassembling a battery may cause short circuit. Proper safety gear must be in... Really? Do you have to put a goddamn warning sign on some dry cell batteries now? Come on, do people become this stupid nowadays? Well, it is true to some extent, but uh, come on. Well, anyway, try not to electrocute yourself. I don't know how you can get electrocuted by a 6 volt battery, but if you do, your problem not mine. Good eye, mate. Today we will have a look of how to obtain manganese dioxide from a 6 volt zinc carbon battery, which can be easily bought from a supermarket. Manganese dioxide is a very useful chemical for amateur lab. It can be used to generate chlorine gas. It's also a precursor to potassium permanganate. It also can be used as a catalyst to generate oxygen gas. For me, I'm going to use this to make manganese-based ceramides. To start things off, let's get rid of the argument label, shall we? Well, mine doesn't say exactly what kind of battery it is. But if you come across a battery in a package like this, it is very likely to be the one you want. Then let's crack the top open. Well, it is somewhat difficult by using bare hands. I'm just a young chemist here and I have no knowledge in martial arts. So let me grab some tools. You know why I don't like get chemicals from common household items? That's why. Well, this part is particularly boring, so let's skip ahead. Oh, finally. Looks like it contains four individual cells, which actually makes sense. Those typical cells generate about 1.5 volts, and they are connected in series circuit, so we should give us 6 volts in total. By using a pair of scissors, cut the wire in your favorite color first. Since we are not disabling a bone or something, the orders don't really matter. So here are all four cells, but I'm just gonna do one because I don't need that much and I'm very lazy. This type of battery contains four useful chemicals. The outer case is made of zinc, also acts as a cathode. The graphite anode is very useful in electrochemistry, which I have shown in my making sulfuric acid by electrolysis video. I will put a link in the description, so be sure to check it out. Now use a pair of pliers to bend over the metal that secures the plastic cap, and uh, remove the cap. Now it's time to remove the graphite anode. Oops, the top just pops right off. But it's okay since it is not a big deal. Now hold the anode in place and gently twist the outer case, applying a force to separate them apart. And here is all graphite anode. Ew, that is gross. Lucky I was wearing gloves. The surface is coated with some organic material. If you want to use it in electrochemistry, be sure to wash them with hot water. Now comes the fun part. After removing the piece of cardboard, we can finally see the manganese dioxide that we have all been waiting for. The manganese dioxide here serves as a media for the electrolyte, which usually be ammonia chloride. I'm not going to too much details about how a battery works in this video, because I'm planning to make a battery in the future, so I guess I will explain it in the future video then. Use a spatula or something to scoop out the manganese dioxide from the case. Just be aware that there is a layer of cardboard in between the manganese dioxide and the zinc. So when you do this, you should do it gently to avoid any paper contamination. Now we have the manganese dioxide with ammonia chloride contamination. To remove that, we will have to wash it. Since ammonia chloride is very water soluble, but manganese dioxide is not. Now get some distilled water and mix it thoroughly. Then I realized the beaker was too small for the job, so I had to transfer it into a larger one. And uh, repeat the process I just said. Now let the suspension settle down to the bottom and decant the water. And uh, repeat the washing process all over again. Just a side note, you can recover the ammonia chloride from the water we just discarded, but uh, due to the amount that you're gonna get, probably not worth your time. So I'm not gonna bother into the recovering steps. 
Because I just needed to make thermite, a high purity isn't necessary. I only wash it twice. But if you plan to do some synthesis with it, I highly recommend you to wash it at least a few more times. Then the beaker is placed into your oven to dry. Here is just a rough idea of how much is in a cell. And uh, it's about 80 grams. I just want to be sure it is actual manganese dioxide. So there are a few tests you can do. Manganese dioxide is a catalyst which fastens the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide and the release oxygen. Here I'm adding 30% hydrogen peroxide into the test tube and immediately we can see a lot of bubbles formed. Then I dip the amber stick into the test tube and it quickly reignites, which proves that we have manganese dioxide. If you like this video, please subscribe to this channel. With more audiences, I'm more motivated to create more awesome science projects. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.